Well, good morning to your church, and I'm glad that you're able to connect with us this morning. We're able to broadcast this message as well. Thankful for God's faithfulness during this week. And I hope you've been able to cope with the current lockdown and that you've been encouraged in the Lord. And I want to truly bring a message today that would be an encouragement to your heart. And as you uh, take the time to ponder on the goodness and the greatness of God, that he would truly comfort your heart. And the title of my message today is God Will Take Care of You. God Will Take Care of You. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And uh, by way of introduction, uh, I just want to say that there are some, who, some of you who are a little bit troubled uh, by what's going around in the world and certainly in our state and these lockdowns. And uh, I've had a few who've asked me regarding the vaccine. Is that something that we should take? And and in particular, somebody asked me, what is the church's view on that? Well, can I just answer that by saying that there is no church view on, on the subject. Uh, what is our view is that we all have soul liberty. Each one of us has the liberty to choose what they want and what is uh, what they deem to be important or necessary for their lives. And so I don't believe that there is a jurisdiction there by the church to tell you whether you should or whether you shouldn't take the vaccine. Uh, but I could tell you that from uh, my personal experience uh, and what we've decided as a family is that uh, we, we have taken our first jab uh, this past Monday and uh, we haven't had any real bad reaction to it. Uh, just the second day, the arm was a little bit tender where the jab was. Uh, but on the whole, we've been feeling fine. And, and that, that's something that my wife and I prayed and considered and thought that would be right for us to do. But what is right for us may not necessarily be right for you. So you pray and consider what God would have you to do. You have that Holy Spirit in you who will lead you and help you to make the right choices. So uh, don't be worried about it. Don't be worried about what's happening in the world today. We need to trust the Lord and walk by faith in Him. And this is the reason for my message today is that for some of us who may have been stood down for work or had our hours reduced, or maybe your business has ceased for a little while. I, I want to encourage you today yeah, from God's word that the Lord takes care of us. He will take care of you. And so this is the passage that we're going to look at in Matthew chapter 6. When the Lord was teaching his disciples. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6. And if you open there reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, Neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the, the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth, that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought of the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Father, we love you and we thank you for your grace and goodness to us. Thank you, Lord, that you have brought us this far and that you are with us and you will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you, Lord, for your grace in our life. Thank you for the salvation we have. 
Thank you for Christ and for the Spirit of God that indwells us. And thank you, Lord, that you even lead us through troubling seasons of our life. And thank you that you are a Heavenly Father and we can lean upon you. Father, I pray that you bless this message. I pray that you blow over it. You, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may minister to the hearts and the needs of your people, Lord, those who are watching online. Father, that you would just use this message to encourage and strengthen and edify your children. And help us, Lord, in these days to have our hearts and our minds resting upon you. And we thank you that you'll keep us in perfect peace. We ask now, Lord, that you bless this, your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, uh, Jesus is trying to teach his disciples, and this is part of, uh, you know, the Beatitudes or the teachings on the mountain from Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. And the Lord Jesus is teaching his disciples in relation to what life should be like, uh, what are the priorities that we have in life. And he starts off with this foundational statement saying that no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What Lord Jesus is saying here is really in life, you could only have one master, only one that you are devoted to and you live for. Uh, you either will choose to live for the Lord and rely upon him, or you're going to rely upon your own physical strength and what you can gather and the material things that are in this life. And certainly this time period that we face ourselves is a challenge, is a challenge where we have to look uh, inwardly and begin to uh, see whether we are people who are totally reliant and dependent upon the Lord, or are we ones who are seeking to be self-sufficient? We think because we can work or because we have finances or we have ability with materialistic things that we can sustain ourselves and once we see these reserves are being depleted uh, we begin to worry or we begin to be anxious about how we will sustain ourselves but this is really the truth that Jesus is about to teach his disciples and I believe would be a great blessing for us to learn in this period of time and uh, that we ought to be God dependent and in being God dependent the Lord will look after us and so he begins to outline to, to his disciples uh, why God is interested in them, or why is God interested in us, even in this time, and that we are his children and he takes care of us. The first thing I see in this passage in verse 25, where he says to them to take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. What the Lord is really teaching us here is that there is more to life, more to living than just the physical aspect. Uh, you know, we sometimes think that life is all about, you know, have I got food to eat? Do I have a place to sleep? Do I have clothes to wear? Uh, you know, am I comfortable? Are, are my needs being met? And uh, we sometimes, even as Christians, unfortunately think that that is life and that's our life's purpose. And we entertain that. And we give all our energy and exert our life's uh, you know, resources in that direction just to satisfy the body. But Jesus is really teaching the, the, his disciples and teaching us that life is more than in the physical realm. Uh, there are more important things just of the, the needs of the body. And uh, we need to look, as Jesus said here, to take no thought of your life. You know, there's more to it than just meat. And, and eating and drinking and uh, uh, taking care of the physical aspect. What the Lord Jesus is really showing us is that life is consisted of spiritual things and also the physical. But if we get the foundation right that we seek the Lord and we are serving him, he will take care of those things for us. You know, Jesus said these words in Matthew chapter 4 when he was being tempted by uh, Satan, if you remember, he told him to convert the stones into bread because he had been fasting for 40 days. And uh, Jesus answered him with these words out of Deuteronomy chapter 8. He said to him uh, uh, that uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You see, Jesus was not saying that he will not consider the supernatural, that God is unable to convert the stones to bread and to feed him. 
Uh, but he, what he was showing Satan is that there is more to life. There's things more important than just the physical needs. And this is certainly what we need to look at, that our, our life is, does not just consist of just bread and water and things that we have for the physical body. And, but it is also looking to that which is spiritual and understanding that we have a great heavenly father who cares for us, who cares for you, who cares for me. And, then, and so uh, when we get stuck on the physical aspect, when we get stuck about with the, whether we have enough food or whether we have enough raiment or whether we have enough money to buy and pay for our, you know, uh, our, our mortgages or whatever expenses we have, uh, we must consider that life is not just about the physical realm, but we need to consider that we have a great God, a Heavenly Father who loves us and will take care of us because life is more than just the physical when Jesus, when, when, when God told them in the Old Testament that he had fed them with manna uh, from, from heaven and he said to them that, you know, man shall not live by bread alone. What that meant is that it is not, we are not just dependent on the physical. Uh, man, our existence is not just dependent on our ability to provide and our ability to supply. What we are what we ought to be is dependent upon the Lord himself, our creator and our God. And he's the one who's able to keep us and to provide for us. And so our, our thoughts and our hearts are drawn to this very fact this morning that the Lord, the Lord is the one who will supply. He said, is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? And behold, the fowls of the air, are they... Uh, uh, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? See, the Lord, he, he provides. He provides for the, the, the sparrows of the field. He provides for all of his creation. And uh, we need to consider that. Consider that the Lord is the one who does that work. The Lord is the one who provides for all of us. And... Uh, and uh, when, we can, when we put our trust in Him, when we're living every day understanding this very fact that we are the children of God, then we understand this next truth, that we are worth more to the Lord than any of His other creations. Uh, God created man was the pinnacle of His creation and, uh, and gave us His Spirit in us and, and uh, made us in His image. And so... God has put all that into us to show us that he cares for humanity. He cares for you. He cares for me. And so we have great worth. We have great worth. You know, um, in Matthew chapter 10, uh, when the Lord was uh, sending out his disciples, he, he said to them this, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? Now, a farthing is a quarter. Uh, so it's 25 cents if you want in our denomination. Uh, he says here, are they not sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than, any, than, than many sparrows. The Lord he, Jesus here ascribes to us worth. We are worth as something to God. You, you, are, you are precious in God's eyes. You, God loves you and God wants to take care of you. And God ascribes, ascribes great worth to you. Now, sometimes we get these things a little bit confused between whether we are worthy or deserving. So whether we deserve something or whether we are worthy of something. And I often hear Christians say, you know, Lord, uh, uh, I'm unworthy uh, to, to receive your salvation. Uh, really, what, it, it, what, what that is, is, uh, is, is not really correct because the Lord saw great worth in you and in me and the humanity that he would send his greatest gift, the Lord Jesus, to come down to this earth and die for your sin and my sin and deliver us from all that wrath and that judgment that God has for all those who have rebelled against him and gone their own way. And when you see what God did to pay for your sin and my sin, he, he did not do that to, uh, to humanity that is unworthy, but in fact, he did it to humanity that was undeserving because we were all like sheep had gone astray. We had turned every man into his own way. 
And because of our rebellion against the Lord, that made us undeserving. We were enemies with God. The Bible says that uh, while we were yet sinners, we were, while we were yet enemies with God, that he loved us and gave Jesus Christ for our sins. And so we need to understand that though we may not be undeserving of the grace of God, we're undeserving of the gift that God has given us, or undeserving of good favor of God upon us because of our sin. Yet I want you to know this morning that you are worthy and God ascribed worth to you and to me and wants to and he loves you and wants to care for you and provide for you. Today, you don't have to worry and stress over things that are taking place in your life. Either you need to worry or stress about where the world is heading. And let me tell you, God is still God. God is still in control and God is still in control of your circumstances of your life. And God still knows what he's doing. And what we need to do is just trust in Him and rely upon Him. And He's able to care, take care of us. The Bible says in, in Psalm 104, if you turn with me to Psalm 104, the psalmist, and it's a wonderful psalm, we won't have a chance to read all of it, I want you to read it. But the whole psalm talks about how God sustains His creation. And, uh, and look in verse 11 with me, uh, the, the Bible, uh, verse 10, He sends the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have the habitation, which sing among the branches. He waters the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man and oil to make his face to shine and bread which strengthens man's heart let me tell you it is the lord who sustains creation and he sustains uh, the beasts of the field and he sustains you and me and uh, he provides for us he sends the rain uh, he sends the, the herbs of the field and the grain uh, to grow that you and i could be sustained and this is all out of his good hand why because he has ascribed worth to you and to me. I'm so grateful that the Lord loves us. I'm so grateful that the Lord sustains us. I'm so grateful that he holds all of creation in his hands. And by him we live and move and we are sustained. And so and we need to learn to depend on him. What the Lord wants to teach us is total dependence. Dependence upon him that he is the one who is able to do these things. He's the one who's able to help us get through even this period. We need to look to him and be encouraged that we are not alone. God has not left you alone. God has not brought uh, this uh, uh, pestilence upon this earth uh, to make us, to put us in distress. Rather, he has uh, brought this about that we, that we learn to be dependent on him. That we learn to grow in faith, uh, to, to walk with him and to rely on him and to pray to him that he will sustain us. He knows all our needs. And so we, we do not need to worry or stress over what is happening in our life right now. Go back with me to Matthew chapter 6, and, and we see that very same thing that Jesus is teaching in verse 27. The Bible says in verse 27 to 30, Which of you, by taking a thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And how yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore I, God, so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, so shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith. But what Jesus is saying here is, there's some things that are outside of our control. Hey, he says, hey, who of you can add a cubit to his stature? That is, who, who of us can increase his height uh, by a cubit? A cubit is the length from your elbow to the tip of your fingers. Who of us? Now, some of us would love to be able to grow by that much. Uh, and, uh, but who of us can make that happen? We know that that is out of our control. Uh, that is something that God uh, wrote in our genetics of, what, of how tall we would be. And, and uh, so none of us can, can add to our stature. None of us can, can add height 
uh, to, to this physical body and 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 you don't need to worry about that you know it's out of your hands it's out of your control this is how you were born and so what the lord is telling us there's some things in life that are not within our control there's some things that happen that we didn't ask for the things that you know we, we that are uh, that are brought into our life for a specific reason that god will use uh, to draw us closer to him or to know more about ourselves uh, but uh, we cannot worry about the things that are outside of our control i think what we need to learn is uh, to to exert our efforts in the things that are within our realm and the things that are outside of our realm we need to just trust them to the lord uh, we can't be worrying about everything that takes place uh, the bible tells us uh, that we ought to trust the lord uh, he is in control of all these things uh, you know, uh, I like what Spurgeon said. Uh, he said, worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but empties today of its strength. If all we do is living anxiously and worried about circumstances and worried about what's going on and how that's going to affect me, how it's going to affect my family. And, you know, will I contract the, the coronavirus and what would happen to me if I do? And and what's going to happen if my family gets it? And should I get the uh, vaccination? And what are the side effects of vaccinations? And uh, this may be legitimate fears that you have, but I just want you to learn to trust the Lord through this all through this time. And I want us to, to really know that we cannot control the circumstances of life that are on the outside, but we certainly can do some things that God has given us the ability to take control over. You know, don't expect God uh, to feed you and to provide for you if you're just lazy and sitting at home. You know, there's some Christians who stay home and they're lazy and they say, well, I'm praying. I'm praying that God will provide my needs. Well, you know what? God will provide your need as you get up and go to work. And as you labor, God will bless your hands and God will prosper you. But don't just be lazy at home and thinking, well, I'm just praying. God promised that he's going to provide my needs and, and I'm just going to sit home and wait for him to do that. No, the Lord will bless that. That through your means of working and laboring, God will provide for you. That we need to do what God asks us to do. And he will take care of the things that are impossible in our life. So let's, be, uh, let's have some wisdom and diligence in our life as we navigate through these times. Uh, let's do the things that we can. And let's trust God that he will take care of the rest. Uh, we, we cannot control uh, some of the circumstances that are that we're living through in our life but certainly we have a great god who's still in control god has not lost control uh, of this world neither has he lost control of the circumstances in your life or my life and we need to trust him and depend upon him and he's able he's able to lead us and to provide for us that which is best you know some of us say well you know it's wrong to plan it's wrong for us to to do things but you know i think planning is okay as long as we are subjected to the will of god as long as we say well, if god wills if god changes my plans i'm okay with that you know that's what james tells us in james chapter in in james chapter um james chapter four if you turn with me james chapter four And verse 13, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get, and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. You know what was wrong there is that they made plans and they thought they, they can do everything and take care of all matters. Uh, and, and there James is saying, them, don't boast about your ability to what you could do tomorrow. What you need to do is be dependent saying, Lord willing, we will entrust tomorrow to the Lord. And I encourage you that you would entrust the future, your future, entrust tomorrow to the Lord. Uh, don't sit today living in worry and fear and anxiety over what will happen tomorrow. 
Live tomorrow to the Lord. Live today by His grace and by His strength. Do what God has put in your hands, what He's given you in your hands. Do it with all your might. And, uh, and just to do your best for the Lord in this current circumstance, in this day that we're in. And, uh, and just worry, live tomorrow and worry about tomorrow tomorrow. Uh, I like what somebody said, peace is not the absence of tomorrow, but the presence of God. And this is one thing we are comforted by, that every day that comes, we are not alone. God is with us. And so God is with you today. Whatever your anxiety is, whatever your stress is today, whatever you're worried about today, I want you to know that God is with you. God is present in your life. And why don't we just turn to him and let him carry those burdens uh, Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5 verse, verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. God cares for you. So why not cast your trouble? Why not cast your worry? Whatever today you're feeling anxious about, why not just live, give it to the Lord and let him carry it? He promised to take care of you. He promised to be your heavenly father. Look, church, I, I think this is a great step of faith. And they really, uh, that's what the Lord Jesus said to them. He said, uh, you know, you, you're not believing that God is able because you are of little faith. And this time that we're living in is a time that we grow in faith, where we begin to see God do some great things for us. And so we must allow him to develop our faith and stretch us, that we see him do mighty things for us. Look, I believe that, uh, that our Heavenly Father is able to take care of me. He's able to take care of you. Well, why do we worry? Uh, why do we fret? You know, I, I, I can um, imagine or I can um, see that even in my home that my kids, uh, you know, as long as I'm around and I'm providing for them and, and they're living within my home, they don't have a care. You know, that they know things are taking place. Things will be paid. You know, the, the, the electricity is getting paid. Uh, you know, the, the food is being bought uh, and being put on the table. Uh, uh, the things that there's some things in their life right now that they don't really worry about. Why? Because they're living in the father's house and that the father is providing. And so we need to look at that even in our life. We are part of the family of God. We are God's children. And let our Heavenly Father take care of things for you and for me. Let's not worry and be anxious about it. He will take care of these things. And we're just so thankful that He's loving and caring for us. Not only Jesus taught them that they ought not to worry about the things that are out of their control, uh, but He told them that, that, his, that their Heavenly Father knows all their needs before they ask for it. Continue with me in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, the Bible says this in verse 32, uh, uh, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What the Lord is showing us here is that. Our Heavenly Father is capable and more than capable and sufficient to provide and to take care of us and to take care of our needs. Uh, he has taken upon himself. He has taken on that responsibility of sustaining us and sustaining all of his creation. And uh, he wants us to trust him. Look what he says. He doesn't want us to worry like how the Gentiles uh, uh, like the Gentiles, he uses them there as an example, as a comparison. says that they're the ones who are busy and worried and running around uh, trying to see what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, uh, what should they wear. And, and uh, you know, we ought not to be like that. We ought not to concern ourselves and, and uh, worry about these matters. But we ought to trust our Heavenly Father because He already knows. He already knows what we need ahead of time. He's already working ahead in your life, knowing to provide for you and to, and to provide for me. But you know what he wants us to do is to come to him by prayer and to ask of him. Look what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and to 11. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. 
and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. What the Lord is teaching us is uh, we ought to come and pray. Ask, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Uh, you know, knock and it shall be opened to you. God expects us to do these things. God expects us to pray. Now, now you say, well, well if God knows already what I need, uh, why is it necessary for me to pray? Uh, you know, if, if God knows already the circumstances of my life and, and he loves me and he takes care of me and he's already prepared these things, uh, why does he need me to ask and to seek and to knock? Well, really what Jesus is really showing us is that we need to show and demonstrate our dependence upon the Lord. And by us praying, asking and seeking and knocking shows that we are dependent on him. Uh, we, we are reminding ourselves that we, we are not self-sufficient, that we are not self-sustaining, that our life physically and spiritually is dependent upon him. And that, so we ought to approach him and ask him that he would give and supply all our needs. And the Lord is able to do that. The Lord is able to sufficiently provide for us, to provide for you and for me. And you know, some of us, uh, we need to learn how to ask. We need to ask the Lord for the right things. You know, James says, uh, we, we, do, we do not have because we ask amiss. Uh, that is where we're asking for the wrong things. We're asking for things to consume upon our lusts. Uh, God is not interested in providing uh, for what your heart's desires are. God wants to provide for you as what is necessary for your need and, sust and sustenance. You know, Jesus taught his disciples to when, how to pray in Matthew 6, 11. And uh, one of that part of that prayer is, give us our daily bread. You know, though God, Jesus was just showing us to pray for our daily needs and uh, what we need sufficient for the day. And uh, so we need to start learning, trusting the Lord and asking him, uh, Lord, would you help me for today? Lord, would you give me what I need for today? Help my family and meet the needs of uh, my needs and, and the needs of my family. And the Lord is able to do that when we come to him and ask him. You know, Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, Paul says this to the church there. He says, be careful for nothing. That is, don't be anxious. Don't worry for anything. He says, be careful for nothing, but by everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You see, again, we ought to come to the Lord in prayer. We ought not to be anxious as, as the children of God. We have a great heavenly Father who, will, who has committed himself to us in taking care of us. Why is it that we take matters in our own hands and begin to worry and fret about them? We need to go to him. And understand that he takes care of us. If he can take care of the birds of the field, if he can, can take care of the lilies uh, of the field, then how much more will he take care of you and me? I know uh, there was a Sunday school song when we were little. We used to sing that about the, the sparrow, uh, the sparrow and the robin. And they're saying, I, I would like to know why these anxious human beings run around to and fro. And there's, so the robin said, uh, I think they don't have a heavenly father that cares for them like he cares for you and for me. Sometimes when we live in worry and anxiety, uh, we, are, we, are, uh, uh, we are taking away uh, from God's glory and his goodness uh, in that we don't trust him. We're not trusting our souls to him that he is able to keep us, and to protect us and to be with us regardless what may come our way. Oh, if you today are struggling to uh, maybe find, uh, you know, find food uh, for your family, do you know that the Lord is able to provide for you? Uh, I know my parents-in-law, the seniors, when Pastor Senior was studying at Bible college, they'll tell me these stories, uh, that, you know, he was a Bible college student with, you know, four or five kids and 
and uh, just reduced hours of work, barely making things uh, ends meet. And, and uh, it, my mother would say that there'd be days that they will wake up and uh, go to the front door and there's just a box of, of groceries. Someone just dropped off a box of groceries. Someone knew that they uh, were in need and God used them to provide for them and gave them a box of groceries. Let me tell you, God is able to move the hearts of the brethren you know god is able to provide for you miraculously as he provided for the children of israel in the old testament he sent down manna from heaven to meet their need god is able to do that i am not restricting the miracle and the greatness of god that he can provide food for you and and to provide for your needs but i also believe that god uses other christians he uses men and women that love the Lord and, and by the Holy Spirit, he touches their heart and, and shows them in the, that there is a need. There's a need of a brother or a sister in the church. And, and, they, and God uses these men and women to, to help give of what they have. Certainly that's what happened in the New Testament. When you read, read in the book of Acts, those who had land, uh, they sold it. And Barnabas was one like them. And, and remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira who tried to uh, emulate that, but they kept part of the money and God struck them. But you, know, you see that in the early church, those who had shared with those who didn't have. And I think God wants us as Christians to do so. He gives us that responsibility to share and be a channel of blessing to others. And, and so I ask you, brother or sister, if God has blessed you tremendously, I ask you even today that you begin to pray and ask God to place on your heart the needs of others. If you see someone in need, maybe share and help with that need. And God will use you to be a channel of blessing in that way. God uses men and women like you and me to be able to help other Christians. You know, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 that we ought to do good, especially to those of the household of faith. And as we have occasion, we ought to do that. We ought to help one another and serve one another in the church. If you, uh, if you have a need, then please let us know. We would love to be a, able to, uh, to help you and, and, and share God's blessing with you and uh, be able to show you that we have a great God uh, who's able to, prov to provide and if we would just turn and trust with him. And so in conclusion, the Lord Jesus concludes this matter in, in, a, in, in a way that it goes back to the same foundational opening statement where there's both, uh, you cannot serve God and mammon. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't be you know, life purpose driven by serving God and serving materialistic things. And so he concludes with, with this very verse. It's about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What the Lord wants us to learn through this passage is uh, we should set our heart and face towards him to love him and to trust him and to walk with him and to be totally reliant and dependent on him praying and asking that he would meet our every need because he loves us and we are of great worth to him and he is able he he owns all things and so he's able to sustain us and to, and to help us during this hour and so we ought to seek him seek first the kingdom of god and when you do that god will take care of you god will supply your needs God will give you peace and calm your heart. God will remove your anxiety when you just trust in him. And God will sustain you. You don't need to worry about tomorrow. You don't need to worry about what the days ahead would be like because the Lord is in control and we are his children and we are in his hands. And so he says, therefore, verse 34, take therefore no thought of the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God doesn't want us to worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, he already has it in control. We just need to take day by day, uh, walking with the Lord, trusting him, because he will take care of us. He will take care of you. I wonder today if you are just, um, uh, just sitting there worrying about uh, what tomorrow is going to be like. I wonder whether today you are worried about, will I keep my job? Will they keep me employed? Uh, uh, will I be able to financially meet all my expenses and obligations? Uh, where is this world heading? Uh, is this, uh, uh, you know, is this vaccination that, that they're trying to bring upon us? Is this the mark of the beast? Look, let me just say that 
you know, this vaccine, what the world is going through is all preparation. This is a prelude. Uh, you know, the world is being conditioned. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the Lord is at hand and the world is being conditioned. Uh, this pestilence, and Jesus said, these are the beginning of sorrows. You'll hear of pestilence, of famines, of wars. We are tr truly entering into that prelude. And, uh, and the world is getting conditioned. Uh, it's getting conditioned to the time when there will be a one world order and the Antichrist will be there. And when they will say that, that they should take the mark of the beast, it will be the reasonable thing because people would have lived through this time and saw that this was the reasonable thing, that we, we all need to band together. We all need to do this in order to survive. But I'm just grateful that we will not be here. I'm grateful for the promise of the Lord that he's coming, that he will take us to be with him. And uh, so we, we're not troubled by it. We, we ought not to be troubled by the affairs of the world. Don't be troubled by the circumstances that are taking place. God has it in control. We are his children and he will take care of you and he will take care of me. And I pray that this morning's message has been truly a help and a blessing to you. And as we close off on a word of prayer, I want you to stay online because there's a wonderful song I want you to hear. God will take care of you. A blessing to you and I hope to be in contact during the week. And I've been encouraged as I've spoken to some of you over the phone uh, that you're still, you know, going for the Lord and, and that you're doing well. And I'm thankful for that. And God's grace is sufficient for the hour. He's able to keep us going. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for the encouragement your word is to us. Thank you that you are our Heavenly Father. Thank you that we can trust in you. Thank you, Lord, that you have even today's circumstances in control. And our life is in your hands. And Lord, you sustain us. You provide for us. And Lord, help us to grow by faith in trusting you and relying upon you. And Lord, as we trusted you for our salvation, help us to trust you for our daily walk and daily needs. And Lord, you're able to provide abundantly. We thank you that you care for us. We thank you that you find great worth in us. Thank you for saving us. And thank you for all that you've done. I pray that you bless your people and encourage our hearts in your word and in your, with your presence, Lord. May the Spirit of God lift us and help us to draw our eyes upon the Lord Jesus. And we thank you for all that you've done in Jesus' precious name. Amen.